So, you got a drone. Congratulations. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to do a very short video on five things you need to do with your drone before you take it out for a flight. Number one, batteries. Now, whilst it's the most basic step in this list, it is the most important one, and that is to charge your batteries. There's nothing worse when you receive your drone and you're so happy to put it together and set it all up, then you realize that your battery is only 50% or, or less. At least in my case, the drone arrived with the batteries completely depleted. In my case, I bought the DJI Fly More Combo Pack, which means that they provide you with three batteries as well as a charging pack, which allow you to charge all the batteries at once. Now, there's, there's a trick to that, because when you plug in your batteries to charge, the case will charge the batteries that has the most battery percentage, meaning that you'll have at least one battery ready as soon as possible, and then it will start charging the rest. If you didn't buy the Fly More Combo, there's an easy way to charge your battery as well. All you have to do is put the battery inside of the drone and then plug in the cable at the back of the drone and then you'll be able to charge it and have it ready in no time. Also, don't forget to charge the controller as well as that is the important part that lets you connect to your drone and fly it to begin with. Number two, setup and updates. What you'll need for this is to install the DJI Fly application and I'm using the iPhone S6 to do this. Um, then your controller and of course your drone. Now, what you want to do is make sure that you turn on your drone first. You do that by pushing one time and then press and hold. You'll see it calibrating. Do the same with your controller as well. Make sure you extend the antennas. And don't forget to plug in the cable provided for the type of phone that you have. All you have to do then is connect your phone to the controller and there you have it. Now go ahead and make sure that you do all of the updates. Um, I skipped all of the signing into the application uh, part for this and it's really easy. As soon as you open up the DJI Fly application, you'll be prompted to sign in with a DJI ID. Go ahead and create an account if you don't have one already and then go to the about settings and make sure that you do all of the updates that are available. Um, you'll see a time lapse on the screen at the moment. It's really, really simple. Number three, don't forget the SD cards. There's nothing worse if you have everything set up and you want to take it out for the test flight and then you realize that you are unable to capture any footage at all. So, at the back of the drone you have a small slot for the SD card. I went ahead and inserted a 64 gigabyte right in there and then you're all ready to go. Number four, know your drone and the application layout. Make sure that you explore all of the settings within the application and familiarize yourself with its positions to make your flight much, much easier. As you open up the application, you'll see in the top corner, you have the three dots. These are your settings that will allow you to play and change all of the safety, control and camera settings. You'll then have the battery time at the top and by pressing on that, they will give you the temperature of the drone and the flight time as well. If you press on the button that says mode P at the moment, these are your flight modes. So you'll be able to use position mode, uh, which is the middle speed, sport mode, which is the highest speed, and cinematic mode, which is the slowest speed that you can shoot. And I usually recommend using the cinematic mode as a first time user, because that way you'll have a much better control of your drone. A couple of worthy of mention settings within the application are at the bottom, you'll see right in the middle, the flashing GPS icon at the moment. That is really helpful for your positioning. So you'll always be aware of where your drone is in regards to you, as well as the height and the distance that the drone is from you in the bottom left corner and by pressing on the map button they will actually give you the drone positioning in reference to your own. The GPS location doesn't show up just yet on the map as I am indoors but you will be able to see an arrow for the drone and the dot for yourself. And then having a look at the bottom right corner you are able to check the exposure of your camera or automatic modes for your camera. 
Number five, security measures. We already mentioned that it's a good practice to start in cinematic mode as a first time flyer. But what you want to make sure is that you put on the propeller guards on the drone as well if you are unsure on whether or not you are prone to crashing your drone as a first time user. I did that at the first flight test that we took. The drone escaped unharmed, so that is a good, good story. Just in case you want to practice in the house, although definitely not recommended, uh, make sure you don't break anything. But the propeller guards are an absolute must if you're trying to practice indoors. Another good thing that you can do is installing a couple of applications on your phone. One of them is called Drone Assist. It will tell you about the areas around you where you're allowed to fly or not. Again, these are for guidelines. They don't necessarily mean that you are definitely allowed to fly or definitely not allowed to fly. They are a very good measure for you to take just as a precaution, just to make sure that there's no aircraft that might pass by on top of you or that you're not in a restricted flying area. And number two is called UAV forecast. It will give you important information about the wind speed at different heights as well as the weather, when is the sun rising, when is the sun setting, and your visibility. So if it's foggy outside, definitely not recommend to fly a drone. You are meant to be able to see the drone at all times whilst you're flying it. Um, and as you can see on the screen right now, it says it's not a good time to fly because there are not that many satellites uh, located. So whilst that might not necessarily affect you that much if you're not flying far away from you, it is a good measure to take into consideration because it does mean that you might not have enough signal to fly. And let's not forget the very last thing that you need to do before taking your drone on a flight is have fun. It might be intimidating at first if you've never flown a drone ever before or any type of aircraft that has a remote. The drone is a really simple drone to fly and DJI is doing a marvelous job at making sure that the automations within the drone are making it as easy as possible. For example, should it happen that you cannot hold the controller for a moment, uh, the drone will hover instead of crashing down. So that's a great feature and just go out there and just have a lot of fun, share all of your videos with your friends. And that's it for today's videos. Thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, um, don't forget that there's a couple of buttons down below. One of them says, I like it. And the other one says subscribe because I will be posting a video every week. So if you want to keep up to them, make sure you subscribe and you press that notification button and you will be notified as soon as I post a new video. Leave your comments down below if there's anything that you think that I missed or what are your experiences with a drone if you have one. Thank you very much for watching. Here's my Instagram if you want to see more and in the meantime, bye.